All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So this morning, we're going to be in chapter 44. That's chapter 44 of the book of Genesis. Chapter 44 of the book of Genesis, where we're going to be at. We're going to see a final test that Joseph places on his brothers. And we're going to look and discuss why it was that Joseph did this final testing of his brothers and what it meant, what it what it signified, and why he did this. Why Joseph did this final test of his brothers. And if you haven't been following along, you don't know the story that's been going on so long, I highly encourage you to go back and 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 read the story of Joseph, watch some of the sermons that we've done over it, and understand what has been going on to this point. So, chapter 44 of the book of Genesis, first we'll get some music, and then we will jump into it. All right, so if you'll bow your heads, we'll pray in, then we'll get into chapter 44 of the book of Genesis. And dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord. We want to thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for bringing us together this morning to learn about your word. Lord, we thank you that you that you gave us your word, that you gave us this, this story, this, this real life event that can help us apply to our lives. Lord, we ask that this be your message, your words, and your will that comes through. And Lord, we just ask that you bless this message and do not let your word return void. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 
So, <clears throat> chapter 44 of Genesis. Again, if you haven't been following along, if you're not sure what is going on here, I highly encourage you to go back and read for yourself. Again, I always encourage everyone to read for themselves. Go back and read for yourselves um, the story of Joseph. Watch some of the sermons. Sure, that's great. But I also encourage you, don't ever, I never want you to just take my word for anything. Go back and read this for yourself. So here we are in chapter 44 of Genesis. And we know that the brothers, we know what's been going on with them. We know that they came back um, with Benjamin and they were kind of surprised with, with some of the different treatment that they were getting because they thought they were about to be either killed or taken as slaves because of the money that had been placed in their bags. So they're kind of, there's a lot of weird things that are going on. And Joseph still has not revealed who he is. His brothers don't recognize him. He recognizes his brothers, but they don't recognize him. Joseph looks like an Egyptian. He is second in command over all of Egypt. So, verse 1 says, Then Joseph commanded his steward, Fill the men's bags with as much food as they can carry, and put each one's money on top of the bag. Put my cup, the silver one, at the top of the youngest one's bag, along with his grain money. So he did as Joseph told him. So Joseph is sending his brothers back to their father Jacob. And the first time that they left, the first time they came and got food, he gave them back the money and put it back in the bag. And they freaked out, thinking, now they're going to think, now, now this, this guy, this Egyptian, this most second most powerful man in the world is going to think that we just stole from him. And they are absolutely freaking out. But Joseph had also told them that they couldn't come back unless they brought Benjamin. And he kept one of the brothers there as well. So two years passed. They come back because they ran out of food. They come back. And Joseph sending them back and not telling them that he's putting not only their, their money back in the bags, but the youngest one, Benjamin, his only full-blood brother, the one that Jacob did not want to send because it was the only son that he thought he had left from Rachel, put my silver cup in the youngest one's bag. And you think, well, this is really deceitful on Joseph's part. To a certain degree, yes, but there was a definitive reason why he did it this way and why he did it to Benjamin. It wasn't to be mean. It wasn't necessarily to be deceitful as much as it was to test where they were at. It's called, it's, it's, it's Joseph's final test. Not Joseph is mean and deceitful. He was testing them. At morning light, we're going to continue. We'll get into this. Verse 3, at morning light, the men were sent off with their donkeys. They had not gone very far from the city. When Joseph said to his steward, Get up, pursue the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? Isn't this a cup that my master drinks from and uses for divination? What you have done is wrong. So now he's telling his steward, after they leave, they haven't gotten very far. He tells his steward, Get some men, go chase them down, and, and, and confront them about this. Tell them, Why have you stolen this silver cup? Bring that charge against them that they, that they have taken this silver cup. And again, this sounds like Joseph is just being awful, but it's not. He's testing them for a specific reason. Verse 6, when he, talking about the steward, when he overtook them, he said these words to him. So he comes, he overtakes them. They haven't gone very far. He overtakes them with a group of soldiers. And they overtake the brothers. And they bring all those charges to him. He says, why did you steal this the silver cup from, from my master? The second most powerful man in the world. Yes, he was the second most powerful man in Egypt. Egypt was the most powerful country in the world. So Joseph was, in essence, the second most powerful man in the entire world. Why have you stolen this cup from him? And his money. 
But they said to him, verse 7, they said to him, Why does my Lord say these things? Your servants could not possibly do such a thing. We even brought back to you from the land of Canaan the money that we found at the top of our bags. Like the last time that we, the, the first time that we that we left, the first time we found the money and we brought it back. So how can you say that we would steal it? We brought all that money back. Whoa, 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 don't kill us. We, we didn't do anything. We couldn't have done that. He says, how could we steal gold and silver from your master's house? If any of us is to found, verse number nine, if any of us is found to have, had, to have it, he must die. And we also will become my Lord's slaves. They're confident they didn't steal anything. And he says, if, if one of us, if one of us is found to have, had, is found to have this silver cup, if you go through and you search our stuff and any one of us has that, that particular one has to die. And the rest of us will be your slaves. They're confident that they didn't steal it. Now we know whose bag this cup was in. So did Joseph want Benjamin to die? No. That was not the purpose of this at all. Did he want his other brothers to be his slaves? You could think... For a second, well, it would be retribution. They sold him into slavery. But that's not what Joseph was doing. All of this looks right here. It looks like Joseph is just paying his brothers back evil for evil, and he's not. There's a reason and a purpose behind this. He didn't want Benjamin to die. He didn't want his other brothers as slaves. He didn't want to repay them evil for evil. He wanted to test them and see where they were at. Verse 10, the steward replied, What you have said is right, but only the one who is found to have it will be my slave. The rest of you will be blameless. So the, the steward says, okay, so just the one who stole this is going, to be, is going to be my slave. The rest of you will be found blameless. You didn't have anything to do with it. I'm not going to punish all of you for one of you doing something. The steward is being, the steward doesn't even know exactly what all is going on and why Joseph's doing this. The steward doesn't know. The steward doesn't know that those are Joseph's brothers. No one in Egypt knows that those were Joseph's brothers. No one in Egypt knows that those were Joseph's brothers. No one. So, verse 11. So each one quickly lowered his sack to the ground and opened it. The steward searched, beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they, the brothers, then they tore their clothes and each one loaded his donkey and returned to the city. So they're all coming back. They didn't, they didn't sell, sell Benjamin out. They didn't sell Benjamin out here. They're all going back. They could have easily, at that point, the brothers could have, and what they did with Joseph, they would have said, okay, take Benjamin. They sold Joseph into slavery. They wanted him gone. They were jealous of, of Joseph. Benjamin is the only one left that Jacob had of Rachel. Benjamin got a lot of special treatment, especially with Joseph being gone. But instead of selling him out, the rest of the brothers are going with him. They didn't leave him. They're going back to the city with him. They could have easily said, oh, well, Benjamin did it. He's gone. Bye. Uh, no longer have to worry about dad favoring you. No longer have to worry about dad favoring you. And, you know, dad said that he would probably, he'd probably pass on if we came back without you. So, you know what? We each get our inheritance at this point, too. Because that's how they used to think. That's how they used to be. That's how they used to think. And this is how Joseph is testing them to see if they're going to continue in the ways that they were or if there has been something changed with them. The brothers before, the brothers would have been like, okay, Benjamin's God. Dad's going to die, too. We get our inheritance. Woo! They would have been fine with that. 
But they're going back with him. They didn't abandon him. They didn't sell him off. They didn't negotiate with the steward and say, well, since you're taking him as a slave, can we get some payment for him? That's how they would have done before. It's what they did with Joseph. Verse 14. When Judah and his brothers reached Joseph's house, he was still there. They fell to the ground before him. What is this you have done? Joseph said to them. Didn't you know that a man like me could uncover the truth by divination? Didn't you not know? You had the, the, the guts to steal from me? Did you not think that I would know? Did you not think that I could figure out where it went? Did you not think that I would fit, find you and hunt you down? What do you have to say? What do you have to say? Verse number 16. What can we say to my Lord? Judah replied. How can we plead? How can we justify ourselves? God has exposed your servants' iniquity. We are now my Lord's slaves, both we and the one in whose possession the cup was found. Judah says, we're not going to leave Benjamin. How can we plead? You've already found us guilty. You found us guilty. How can we even make a case? So, we'll all be your slaves now. Not just Benjamin, but all of us will be your slave. We'll all be your slave, not just Benjamin. We're not going to return home without him. Will all be your slaves. Then Joseph said, I swear that I will not do this. The man in whose possession the cup was found will be my slave. The rest of you can go in peace to your father. He's testing them. I don't want all of you, I just want Benjamin. What are you going to do with your youngest brother, which whenever Joseph was taken into slavery, Joseph was that young brother. What are you going to do with your youngest brother? Are you going to leave him here in slavery and return home to your elderly father without him? Or are you going to leave him here? Are you going to leave him here or are you going to stay? Are you going to stay with him or are you going to leave? I don't want all of you. I just want him. So what do you say now? How? Do, what do you say now that you're, you're not only... Okay, so you pass that you're not... That you're not just going to straight sell them off. But what if you're pressured? What if there's a little bit of pressure put on you? What if there's a little bit of pressure put on you? Will you cave then? Or are you going to stand by that? Are you going to stand by your word? What if there's a little bit of pressure put on you? Are you then going to turn on each other? Are you then going to turn and, and, and say, forget you, Benjamin? What you're, he's testing them, saying, what you're saying is okay. What you're saying is good. But when push comes to shove, are you still going to stand behind your word? Are you still going to stand for what is right? They did not do this. this is, these are the same brothers that, that literally wanted to kill Joseph and sold him into slavery because of jealousy and because of greed. So Joseph wants to make sure of where they're at. Verse number 18. But Judah approached him and said, Sir, please, let your servant speak personally to my Lord. Do not be angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh. The Lord asked his servants, Do you have a father or a brother? So in other words, you, you have asked us, Do you have a father or a brother? And we answered, my Lord, We have an elderly father and a younger brother the child of his old age. The boy's brother is dead. He is the only one of his mother's sons left, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him to me so that I can see him. But we said to my Lord, the boy cannot leave his father. If he were to leave, his father would die. 
Then you said to your servants, if your younger brother does not come down with you, you will not see me again. This is what happened when we went back to your servant, my father. We reported your words to him, but our father said, go again and buy us some food. We told him, we cannot go down unless our younger brother goes, goes with us. So if our younger brother isn't with us, we cannot see the man. Your servant, my father, said to us, you know that my wife bore me two sons. One left. I said he must have been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him again. If you also take this one from me and anything happens to him, you will bring my gray hairs down to Sheol in sorrow. In other words, I, I will be dead. Verse 30. This is still Judah speaking. So if I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, his life is wrapped up with the boy's life. When he sees that the boy is not with us, he will die. Then your servant will have brought the gray hairs of your servant, our father, down to Sheol in sorrow. Your servant became accountable to my father for the boy, saying, in other words, he's saying, I became accountable to my father for the boy, for Benjamin. And I told, I told my father, he said, if I do not return him to you, I will always bear the guilt of sinning against you, my father. Now, please let your servant remain here as my Lord's slave in place of the boy. Let him go back with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father without the boy? I could not bear to see the grief that would overwhelm my father. This is not the same type of speech that they would have been giving at any other time. This is, this is hitting Joseph. Think about Joseph here. He's got to hide all of his emotions as he's talking to his brothers that did this to him. And now he sees what they're willing to go through for Benjamin not to be in slavery, not to be a slave, to not cause harm to their father. Remember, his brothers told, told his father Oh, he's dead. He got torn to pieces. They took that coat of many colors and ripped it and put some, some pig's blood on it and said, oh, he was torn to pieces. He's dead. No, Joseph doesn't necessarily know that they did all of that. He heard them talking and may have overheard them saying that they were going to do things like that. But they sold Joseph into slavery, and he is now sitting here listening to Judah plead with him listening to his brothers absolutely plead with him not to allow anything similar to happen to Benjamin. Joseph has tried to hide his emotions the best that he can. He already had to leave once and go weep in the middle of his brother speaking. He is... There's a lot of emotion that is put into this. And this, this here, hearing Judah speak this, was why Joseph did that final test. He wanted to see what they were willing to do. He wanted to see what they were willing to do. If they were going to sell out Benjamin if they were going to harm their father by going back without Benjamin, if they would allow Benjamin to be killed, if they would allow Benjamin to be sold into slavery, if they would allow any of these things that they did exactly that purposefully, purposefully did to Joseph, if they would allow those things to happen to Benjamin. And they did not. They also did not steal. They did not murder. These are all things that these brothers had done numerous times before. Joseph's brothers were not good people up to that point. Not at all. So Joseph is testing them, and they passed. And think about, like I said, think about from Joseph's standpoint as he is standing there testing them not revealing who he is. They don't know who he is. He has the power in his hand to do whatever he wants to do with them. And he is hearing his brothers plead for Benjamin. He's hearing his brothers 
completely different than what he remembered. This is these aren't the same these aren't the same brothers that sold him into slavery. They are, but they're not. How Joseph held it together here without straight bursting into tears at this exact moment, it's building to a crescendo. The story of Joseph and his brothers is building, and it's building, and it's building, and it's building. And next week, as we go into chapter 45, we'll have a bit of a conclusion to this building crescendo. You don't want to miss next week as we as we go into chapter 45 and we have some some more resolution to this. I don't want to give away too much, but you can read ahead if you'd like. Please feel free to read ahead. We'll be posting the daily Bible readings every day so that way you can read along with and every day by the time we reach next Sunday, we will you will have read chapter 45 before we start going into it. I highly encourage you to read, always highly encourage you to read the Bible for yourself. That's why we post the daily Bible readings on the Night for God Ministries Facebook page. So with that, I'm going to close this one out. If you will bow your heads with me, please. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that you test us sometimes. Lord, we thank you that you test our hearts. Lord, we thank you that, that you test us to make sure of where our heart is. And Lord, sometimes it's not comfortable, but Lord, we thank you for that testing because we can learn where our hearts are in that testing too. Lord, we, we can find the weak spots. You, you point out the weak spots to us. And Lord, we thank you that you teach us so much about mercy and forgiveness and grace. So that way we can try to apply it to each other because we are in a fallen world and every single one of us has done wrongs. Lord, we thank you that you teach us about forgiveness, grace, mercy, all of these positive things. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to guide us as we continue on throughout this day this week, this month, this year. Lord, we ask that you guide every step that we take, every second of every day. And Lord, we, we just thank you for bringing us together. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. With that, I will see you guys back. Wednesday night Bible study, Wednesday at 7 p.m., Friday night lights, Friday at 8, Sunday morning service, Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Until next time, I love you guys, and I will see you later.